Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. First, thank you for joining us, BMC, at I believe the first in person event since COVID. We're very excited to meet again in person with so many of our customers and partners. So, as you heard from this morning's、uh, keynote, today, AI, particularly Gen AI, is a hot topic, not just within tech, but just across the world, even in the consumer world. So, this session, my goal is to help highlight BMC's unique perspective into how AI can improve your service and operations within your companies. So, AI, in my mind, constitutes three major components. The first and most important is the use case. We all have seen the excitement of going to ChatGPT and try to get the AI to compose the poem. That's a great sort of learning about it use case. But what is the business specific use case that can really improve the efficiency and the experience of our employees? Of course, secondly, Is the math, right? Whether it's what we used to call traditional or everyday AI clustering, forecasting, or in the case of Gen AI, large language models, what is the right math model for the domain and for the problem use case you're trying to solve?、Right? And thirdly, is the data. I think someone recently said that without the math, the data is just reporting. But without the data, the math is just. An equation, right? So the question is do you have the right use case? Do you have the right math model? And do you have right data, whether it's in quality, whether it's in quantity, whether it's in sort of data recency, for you to drive the math model to deliver the use case? So within BMC, as you see this morning, We're really focused on enabling our customers to become connected digital operations, connect digital ops kind of companies, right? Within there, there's five major areas. And this session, we're going to focus on how AI, particularly Gen AI, can help customers really advance the case, use cases in AI ops and service ops, okay? So before we go into The slide where what I'd love to do is show you the software and then demos. So, this is the beginnings of a conversational chat enabled by Helix Virtual Agent, powered by Helix GPT. So, we have a developer, Steve, who wants to get some environment, a 50 node cluster in AWS. Okay, very typical DevOps developer use case. Instead of going to a place to send a request, okay, Steve is conversing with the chatbot. And of course, the first question is how much memory do you need? Do you need right? this is, remember, this is a conversation in context, in context asking for the right parameters.、Okay? And Steve, being a developer, how much can I have? Every developer wants the biggest size machine with the most vo、uh, volume of memory. And again, the conversation is intelligent in the sense that it gives you a range. Okay, we have 16G to, uh, uh, and up to 120G. Default, the company always gives you the smallest, right? So Steve goes, okay, I'm doing data science, right? And we all know data science is heavy memory consumption. So how much can I have? And the conversation is intelligent enough to recognize for the use case of data science, Steve rightly deserves an environment that's larger in memory. Okay? So, typically for your use case, we would give you 64 or 128. Steve says, yes, give me 128.、Okay? Remember, this is a conversation in context with intelligent answers. So, the conversation goes, okay. Are you okay with that? Then I'm going to create a request for you. Steve said, Yes, create a request. And then immediately behind these things, a request in service management that normally he would have had to go in and fill in all the fields is created for Steve. Okay? So at this point, Steve can take a look at the request, 
link into service management to see what is going on, what is a request. A little bit time later, Steve's like, what is going on with my request, okay, for the, uh, for the uh, environment? And the chatbot say, okay, not only do I know who you are, I'm talking to you, Steve, right? And I know about the request in question, I can show you where that is. So in the conversation, Steve can click over to service management to say, okay, that request was initially submitted, now it's in progress, right? So that the, the conversational virtual agent remember the context, remember what Steve asked for, immediately pull up the ticket that he was looking for, okay? So that is a great use case for a conversational experience for a developer. Now let's take a look at another one, okay? So on a different day, Steve comes back, I have a VPN issue. VPN issue, along with things like password reset, is one of the most popular service requests for any service desk across the globe. I talk to many customers. If you sort all your service requests, VPN, password, environment provisioning is gonna be a top use cases. Now, traditionally, if you submit a request into a, into that, a chat, you come back with a long list of, here's the 10 articles, knowledge articles, you should read to reset your VPN, to figure out what's going on. Very few users enjoy the experience of reading 10 different articles. No one wants to do that. So what Helix GPT can do is scroll through all of your knowledge articles, come up with a step-by-step -step process to say, first, figure out your connection. Second, restart your client. Third, change your server location, et cetera, step by step. And it's important that the chat recognize Steve is on a Windows machine, so that's context of your environment, and give you the right instructions, okay? And if Steve wanted additional help, what we can do is a pull up a short video, right? That, that's a much easier instruction to follow than reading documents. Follow a video how to reset your VPN password, how to reconfigure, and how to redirect your new VPN server, right? That is a much better employee experience than just serving up 10 articles, say, Steve, go read it and help yourself, okay? So these are just a small taste of one use case within service management is what we call conversational chat that touches the service management ticket auto creation, touches search with answers from knowledge management, right? And touches the context of the user and what they're trying to do. So that's one use case for Helix GPT, our AI and Gen AI uh, solution. So now let's pull the lens back, see what is it that BMC, our unique view and offering in Gen AI. As I mentioned, other than use case, the first, the, the, the most important thing is the data. Do you have the right data to solve the problem? So over the last couple of years, in building the Helix platform, we've, cons we've made a concerted effort to make sure that all of your data that's relevant for your service and operations use case are gathered together in a single platform. So what kind of data am I talking about? Now you have your classic operations data talking about events, metrics, and logs. Anybody in a knock and monitoring business will know exactly what I'm talking about. Very classic operations data that signals the health of your system. In addition to that, we're pulling in data from your incidents, from service management incident data, for change data, and you can even pull data from places like JIRA, if you want to have user stories or defects or tests, right? And then we certainly can point data from the knowledge articles. Many enterprises have thousands, if not tens of thousands of knowledge articles accumulated over the years, okay? And very, very importantly, the top one is your topology. The topology is a graph, if you will, visualizing a graph that highlights all of your systems 
and all the different components and relationships to each other. So when you have information about an event on a server comes in, it can show you all the different impacts. I'll show you in a little bit what I'm talking about. So these are all the data that would drive a conversation. Now you can see this is not just a general internet. This is a very specific type of data, often very specific to your organization, that can drive a conversation that's much more relevant. In addition, we have the math aspect that's embedded in the Helix platform, right? So we have domain-specific large language models. What does that mean, right? That means that the parameters going to these language models are already pre-tuned for operational use cases. It talks about things like VPN reset, password reset, server provisioning, employee onboard, et cetera. That's very specific in the domain, and those models right, are pre-built into the Helix platform that customers can use. So with the data and with the math, we drive different types of uh, things you can accomplish with AI. The very first is sort of predictive is based on what's happening in the last you know, day, 48 hours, seven days, et cetera, et cetera to do pre prediction, almost like a forecast regression kind of way of what the future is likely to be. And a lot of companies are already using that. A lot of products already incorporate predictive type of AI. Some people, again, call it current, everyday AI. What's more interesting is the causal AI. So if you can predict something is going wrong, or if you're in a situation, something is already going on, can you, how fast can you find the root cause, right? There is an emerging term within this whole uh, uh, DevOps incident is called mean time to innocence. How fast can you excuse, let's say, in a situation of 10 different teams, from server to database to load balance or networking, how fast can you isolate the one team that really is causing the issue to let everybody else go because they're innocent, right? Causal AI is the next piece to understand the impact of a service, impact of a node, how that impacts everything else. So once you can forecast something and once you can pinpoint the cause, what can you do about it? So a lot of different things. We already saw conversational AI or through conversational search to find the right solution. We're working on, and we'll show you in a little bit, a best action recommendation, right? Imagine you're a very junior service desk employee or uh, a new person just got hired to the knock center. You figure out what's going on, now what do you do? So the AI can help you recommend based on similar situations, based on the automations that have already been built to have a best action recommendation. So those, and then of course, some of the favorite activities for incident team is after incident to do the summarize. Many of us have read or had to build RCA documents, the five whys, right? AI absolutely has the capability to look through all the chats, look through all the conversations, look through the logs and incidents and draft, draft something that is, for example, first initial draft of RCA document to be shared with the organization. So those are all the different things that we can do now above and beyond a predict and causal AI. Okay. So uh, I believe Ayman or Ram mentioned this morning that BMC has been uh, working with this, evaluating this, embedding Gen AI into our products for some time. So this is a rough timeline. It goes all the way back to the initial first Gen AI paper was published. So we were working uh, with open source based BERT model, large, large language model, as early as 2021. So if any of you have early uh, adoption of Helix uh, service management, for example, in 2021, you will have seen proactive problem management incident clustering that is uh, related to that. And of of course, the entire world got excited at the end of 2022, about a year ago, right, with OpenAI ChatGPT, and we continue to embed more and more such capabilities into the Helix platform. So we've been very uh, happy that more and more people know about it, but that we've had a lot of experience solving specifically, again, for the domain of service and operations management. Okay. So what is the Helix GPT at a glance? 
What it is is really we try to become an expert of your system, right? Many people have heard about expert systems, you know, systems that are very smart, etc. But Helix GPT, we want to get to know your system really well, so that way a lot of actions, recommendations, conversations is very much in context, right? It's GPT model built for IT, built for operations and um, service management, really provides insights into your operations, your service decks, your incidents, your problems, your change requests, et cetera, right? And then have a, a natural language model to help create explanation. And the way that we do is we feed the data from your operations and from your tickets, monitoring in things like JIRA. We have pre-built uh, model that can be loaded into your system and that can learn over time, uh, continuously be trained based on more monitoring data, more incidents, more tickets that you create, right? And the, most importantly, the benefits on the back end. M many of the folks using service management are familiar with problem management, right? Familiar with incident and knowledge management, right? So you saw at the brief demo earlier, with knowledge management, crawling through all your knowledge base, make a rep recommendation, and surface it up as, as a conversational chat with virtual agent. And also incident management is correlating we have, when something goes wrong, your service desk tend not to have one ticket. They get all sorts of incidents coming in. People, something's slow, something's not available, right? That, it's a, it's a, it's suddenly burst of incidents coming in. When they come in, to be able to correlate, to say, okay, it's not 50 different things going on, it's actually one, and here's the one problem you need to solve, right? So be able to quickly get to root cause. And then, of course, in problem management, when you have a problem that's pattern, what is the recommendation for a remediation that I would use, okay? So, let's see. Okay. So now, we've heard a lot about Gen AI. There are some issues that uh, uh, often is in the news. I just want to make sure you guys have a sense of how BMC is addressing these. The one is uh, the data aspect. We're not crawling through internet of data. When someone has a VPN issue, we don't go to Wikipedia say the definition, the history of VPN. It's very specific to how your company solves VPN issues, for example. Uh, there's definitely the challenge and risk of hallucination. So when something uh, uh, is recommended, how trustworthy is that? So we have a lot of safety built in, and that's also obviously continuous learning and validation that you can, you can uh, put in as preventative measure. And the thirdly, this space is happening really, really fast, right? For example, OpenAI just had the first developer conference like a month ago, so more and more people were building with their models. Azure, Microsoft's coming up with a lot of options. So we have very much a uh, uh, option for the customer. If you want to leverage your existing models, pipe it into Helix, absolutely. If you want to leverage the math and models we've built on your data, absolutely. So it's very much an ecosystem that we can give you options, okay? So now, Let's take a look back into the software again to see uh, when we talk about AI in service ops, what are we talking about? The first is when you hear service ops, right? And it is something that, you know, we coined the concept. What it is is linking smoothly the data from service management, incident, problems, changes, to the data that comes from operations management, single platform, so support a workflow that smoothly go from one, in terms of service desk, to operations, system health, and back so that service desk employee can quickly give an answer to your requester, right? This back and forth smoothly on the data layer and on the workflow layer is what we call service ops. What service ops does is to make your incident resolution and root cause and recommendation faster so your team can work a little bit faster and smarter, okay? What you see here is a workspace within Helix Service Management called ITSM Insights, okay? What it's telling you is that there are 55 incidents coming in, recorded, yeah? And there's this possible major incident going on. If you click on the uh, 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 incident, 
as I said, mentioned earlier, when you have something going on, you tend not to get one or two tickets incidents. You tend to get a big mini storm. You can see many of these incidents sound somewhat similar. Mobile app slow, retail app slow. So we create a master incident called retail outlet service is slow. So basically, there's a business service. It's called retail outlet. Okay, and that incident is. Uh, that uh, uh, service is behaving badly for some reason. You're getting a whole storm of incidents, which we use AI just cluster into one called master incident. Okay? And then if you're a service desk employee, you click on this master incident because you have to explain to your end user what is happening. So we're able for this service desk employee, Mia, to say the probable cause is with 70% confidence, right? which is Something's happening with this, this particular server. Server or network uh, node or something's happening. If you double click the detail, okay. First, notice we actually have traversed now from stereotypical service management into operations management, right? From service decks to monitoring with one click over sitting on the Helix platform. And then you can see Mia, if she has access to that data, you provide them. Uh, with access, has a lot of rich information she can understand to explain to her end users. Foremost is the timeline, okay? What happened to this retail outlet service? When did it go from green to yellow to red? And notice there's a blue dot, right? So this is a change that happened some hours ago that triggered this e eventual trend. The second thing that's very prominent on this screen is what we call the service model, right? Remember I said earlier about topology. This is literally a visual diagram. And by the way, you can zoom in even more or zoom out even more, depending on complex. Some of our customers are multi-layer, highly complex service models, okay? And by zooming in, you can quickly figure out, okay, there's something going on with the network device that's likely causing the problem that is giving a very poor health score, by the way, of 10 out of 100. So certainly this service is now healthy, okay? So very quickly we can isolate. This is a part of the issue, okay? And then you can uh, uh, scroll down to see the health indicators. Why is it that we are giving such a poor health score? You can see the retail uh, outlet application is deployed two dif at two different places. One in India, when in US and Texas. And then if you look at the response time in India at 1.2 right, um, uh, seconds, that's re reasonable, it's still below the 2.0 threshold. But if you look at the Texas deployment, is at 2.6. So very quickly you can isolate which users does it impact. So most likely those tickets are coming from Texas users, you know, whose performance is significantly slowed. Okay? Now if you Take a look at the root cause analysis, scroll down. You can see that there is the host. By the way, that's a piece of information that's being forwarded to the service management side. And then you can see, okay, what is the event, the log event that comes in that highlights the issue? Okay, for about four hours ago, remember the dot on the timeline? That was a change to a network device, okay? And that network device, you can look at, is impacting the service and raising the issue to a critical level, okay? So that is a lot of the information immediately available. You can understand the cause. Remember I said about causal AI, you can understand the cause of that, that incident, okay? Now let's click down, further analyze the situation, okay? So, the situation, by the way, is if you have multiple events coming in on the operations management side, it's not 50 different events from different servers. It's one situation, roughly mapped to a one incident, for example, right? And you can see that all these are, they've had, in the past, we've had 23 such very similar situations, okay? So let's go back. Yep. So these are all the different situations that happened, and uh, these are all the different events under the situation yep. that we believe the most probable cause is a network server. Okay. 
So you can see they're all related into a master situation. So we have three different things we can do to address, to remediate. Okay? So one thing you can do is to do a reset VLAN. Okay? The other are two additional pre-built automation that let's say if you are a reasonably junior operations person, you could just click on that and have that solved. Right? So what we can take a look at is has this uh, uh, situation happened before and what was the item that solved this problem? Okay? So you can look at the similar situation that got closed a little while ago. Right? And that was the automation, the VLAN reset was the right automation. We believe that this one you know, solved the problem historically, so we would recommend the end user, the uh, uh, operations, but quickly to reset the VLAN to solve the problem. Okay? So run the automation, there we go. Okay? And then the interesting thing is perhaps resetting VLAN is one of those automation you want to take a pause. It's big enough change, you want to make sure it's documented in your system of record. So what you can do is create a change request. Okay? You create a change request that gets automatically synced back to service management. You see that? Service management. There's a document of the fact that this particular uh, operation that's to be done by operations team is logged and linked in the service management. Okay. So there's a lot that we've seen end to end from service, opera service management to operations that is related, driven by AI. We first saw the incident clustering, right, from all the different incidents in the, uh, in the uh, uh, master incident. Then we saw linking into the operations management, looking at the topology to identify the probable cause of the incident, be the network node, and then we saw recommendation of different automation that we think will solve the problem based on historical 23 times as happened before, right? A lot of these are very much AI driven, right? In terms of the overall use case. So we've done a lot and I highly encourage you, encourage you all to stop by the booth if you haven't already to see even more that's coming down the pipeline, okay? Uh, as I mentioned, we're mentioned that we're investing in this space heavily. So some of the capabilities you're going to hear very shortly over the coming weeks, right, are things, for example, problem management automation. So when you have a problem, right, in the case of VPN, uh, you want to be able to have recommendation of automation to you based on what AI is recommending based on past successes, right? Whether it's uh, uh, restoring, uh, restarting VPN or enrolling certificates, to have the recommendation made to the end user. Another piece is, uh, we're very proud of the name, uh, best action recommendation. We are causing it, we're calling it raising the bar, using AI to raising the bar on your IT operations. So basically correlating all the different instances uh, incidents from previous, and then make a recommendation, make the best recommendation, right? Think about it this way. If you have an L1 operations engineer, right, the person is going to benefit greatly from this capability because the person may be new, but we provide a set of recommendations and say that with 80, 90% of confidence, this will solve your immediate problem. And we make the recommendation based on looking at historical trends. Okay, we'll take a look at that for a little bit. Okay, uh, I think I just covered that. So let's take a look at what the bar looks like, yeah? Okay, so first of all, you see that this is night mode just for the UX folks out there. Uh, Helix, you can have a night mode, and we're working on daytime mode, whichever is better for your eyes. Uh, so this is a night mode we're looking at, and by the way, this is coming in the, in, in the coming weeks, right? So this is a, a bridge. For anybody who's being on an incident, you may look and feel familiar. One of the most frequent asked for question, a new person joining a bridge is, what is going on, okay? When they say what is going on, what they really mean is what is wrong, what changed, 
when did the change take place? That's the classic problems, classic question. And if you've ever been on a bridge, and I have been in my days, uh, you tend to repeat the answer over and over, or maybe change it as you do have more data. So you can see that on top of here, a memory used by user processing kernel, et cetera, server is a root cause. By the way, this was not typed in by operations human. This was Gen AI generated human understandable root cause. So if you get a manager, director coming in, what's going on? You basically say, read that, right? And that will get automatically up updated every hour or so as we find more information. And then you click on detail. Like that doesn't tell, it's one sentence, might be good enough. You click on detail, right? It gives you more information. And by the way, my observation of Gen AI is it's very verbose. I don't know how many of you guys try to ask questions for chat GPT, you get back in paragraphs. So, so aligned with that, we also, so far, in terms of uh, Helix GPT, provide a bit more detail with its performance, its I.O. related, and kernel impact, right? This is detail. Again, this is not typed in by human, right? It's auto-generated. and it needs to refresh. So this is where we also need to make sure that when we deploy, it's validated, et cetera. It gives a great place to start for someone new to the bridge and for sharing information throughout, okay? So as you can see, you know, in, in terms of it could tell you what is the incident that came in from, and really important, this is the name of business application, right? It's impacting service, it, it doesn't say, database XYZ or web server XYZ, it tells you at some point, you know, there's a person in the company, a business owner that owns a service called retail outlet. So you can tell this person your service is impacted, right? And then we have some automations available. And then you can run that automation. So in terms of the, uh, have you seen this incident before and why is the best recommendation for the automation? Right? You can go back seven days and we can configure for 90 days. If you t click on the 90 days, so, okay, similar things has happened before and that's why we are recommending this set of action to take. Right? So this is the kind of thing that's coming uh, uh, into Helix that customers can benefit from. It gets you quickly summarizing, continuous summary of what's going on, gives you a recommendation and then certainly you know, it can link back the retail application to see the topology, to see the events, to see the log and all of that. And then ultimately in the service desk to be able to answer the question to the end user. What happened? <laughs> Why is my retail application slow? And when is it going to be fast again? Right? So that is um, uh, what, what I wanted to share today. There's a lot going on with Helix using AI and Gen AI to help to improve your service and operations.